This video is brought to you by Sailrite. In this video, we'll be showing you how to make fabric wall hangings. Simply use a decorative fabric and staple it over a door or canvas frame. Fabric wall art can be used to bring style and charm to any living area, whether it be inside or outside. Hi, I'm Nikki Taylor from Sailrite, and today we're going to be making an outdoor fabric wall hanging. This is a wall hanging that we're going to put on the side of a porch as a decorative piece to warm up the room and help make it feel a part of your home. We have this 18 inch wide door that we're going to be using as the base for our wall hanging. So the first thing we need to do is determine how long we want the door to be and then cut it down to the appropriate size. The area where we're going to be hanging our wall hanging is around 6 feet wide and 12 feet tall. We also have a sideboard, a small table that's going to be up against the wall and we want to leave about a foot between the wall hanging and the table which measures roughly 36 inches high. To determine how long our board needs to be we're going to base it off of the pattern of our fabric and we don't want to cut off the leaves in the middle so we're going to start right here where the pattern starts and if we prop up our board we can isolate the pattern we want about three feet of room above the wall hanging on the wall. And so if we follow the patterns down in sets, we could cut it off here at the base of this pattern, but that wouldn't leave us as much room at the top of the wall as we'd like. So we're going to skip a whole repeat of the pattern down and go to about right here. Nikki has isolated the pattern where she thinks the wall hanging should stop vertically and has placed yardsticks at those locations. Now she will measure to that distance to determine if the wall hanging will fit appropriately on our wall application. Our wall requires the fabric wall art to be about 60 inches to fit perfectly on our 12 foot high wall. 63 inches, that's just about perfect. Now that that's determined, we'll measure the door to 63 inches, place marks with a Sharpie marker, strike a line, and cut the door. We purchased these doors from a hardware store. They were only $26. We cut them here with a circular saw and then we'll sand the rough edges with sandpaper. Now that we've cut our door down to size, it's time to measure our fabric. So we've laid it back where we had it originally at our yardstick mark right here. And we have plenty of fabric out the top, so we're gonna leave that. And then you want to make sure you have a little extra fabric at the bottom so that you have enough to wrap around. So we're just going to go out another leaf pattern to about here. So now we're going to determine on the back side of the fabric where our board is going to be. We're going to make some little marks for our reference. We've decided that we want a full set of leaves to be the center to be centered on the board. And you can do this however you want. It's um, all up to you what you decide is artistic. Uh, but we've decided that we want a nice square pattern. So the center of these four leaves is gonna be the center of our board. And we know that our door is about 18 inches wide. So we're going to line up nine inches right at our center mark. And then we're going to make two small marks on the back side of the fabric at a total of 18 inches. So we've noticed that on our fabric, one full repeat is what looks like two sets of leaves. These leaves are centered and these leaves are a little off-centered, so you want to make sure that you measure from the same point every time, whatever that point is on your fabric. Now we're going to strike a few spots to connect our lines, just small dots so they're not noticeable, but so that we can find our line easily. Now we wanna line it up with where we started our fabric when we measured the door. 
For our wall, we want two of these wall hangings. And we'll have plenty of excess fabric across the width to make two door panels. So we're going to cut the excess fabric so there's enough to overlay on the back side and staple. Then we'll use the other half for the second door. Now that our door is positioned exactly where we want it on the back side of the fabric, we'll roll the fabric over to the back side and we'll be using the dual fast stapler from Sailrite. It's a great electric stapler. However, if you have a household stapler like an Aero brand, that will work great as well. Notice we're placing our staples about two inches away from the edge of the door and we're leaving about two inches of excess fabric at the extreme edge which will be rolled under after it's been stapled in place. We'll staple this complete side in place before we staple the opposite side. We'll apply a lot more tension to the other side to make sure the fabric is pulled taut. We're spacing the staples about five inches apart. That's to get the fabric in position and taut. Later on, we'll come back and staple in between there, tensioning the fabric even more. Nikki's gonna roll the door around so that she can more easily work with the other side. The opposite side has already been positioned. Now she's applying the tension and placing staples approximately every five inches apart. Tensioning the fabric tight as she goes. To tension the fabric better, use the side of your hand as Nikki is doing here. If you just use the tips of your finger, you won't get as even of a pull. Now that we have the fabric stapled along the two long edges, we're going to apply tension to the fabric and put staples in between the areas where we initially stapled. So this tensions the fabric even more and also secures the fabric down solidly. No reason to be conservative when stapling fabric. There's a little bit too much fabric at the ends. She's going to cut some of that off. When you get to the corners, it's a little tricky. What we're going to do is we're going to poke in at the corner to get a little bit of the excess fabric on its way in on both sides. Then we're going to take the outer corners and carefully flip the fabric up. On the side here, you want to make sure that your fabric isn't hanging off the edge. So you tuck the excess fabric inside. And we'll pull it tight and staple. To do that same thing on the other end. Now to hide the unraveling edge or the cut edge of the fabric, we're going to roll it under by approximately an inch. That's why we kept the staple approximately two inches away from the raw edge of the fabric. And then we're going to staple that in place as well. This will give a more professional look on the back side of our wall hanging. Not that it's necessary, but it's not a bad idea. And Nikki's done a great job. Now she just has one more panel to do for our particular application. Now we're all done, so we're ready to flip it over and see what it looks like. Turned out beautiful. Nikki's now finished both panels. Now she's going to place hangers on the back side. And here we are with both doors finished. We had to run out to the hardware store to pick up some hangers. So now we got these, we're going to screw them into the back so we can hang them up on the wall. So it's very important that they're all lined up the same so that both hangings are level on the wall. So we're going to measure a foot in. And then we're going to measure 
approximately three fourths of an inch over. Make mark. I'm gonna go ahead and screw it in place. Our fabric wall art is going to hang on a brick wall, so we're using masonry drill bits to pre-drill a hole, and then we'll use Tapcon concrete screws, which will be used to hang our art. Hang on, after the materials list, we'll give you an overview shot of what it looks like. Here's the list of materials that was used to build these outdoor wall art hangings. We used only two yards of fabric because we were able to get two up on the width of the fabric. We also purchased doors and hangers from a hardware store. Everything else you should have at home. If you want to see the complete fabric porch makeover, including before and after video takes, click on the video image here. For more free videos like this, be sure to check out the Sayerite website or subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel today. It's your loyal patronage to Sayerite that makes these free videos possible. Thanks for your support.